in terms of conference alignment, obviously, like, listen, we understand every single aspect of it, every facet. We got it all in here for <laughs> sure. But let's say there are some people at home who maybe do not have an understanding of what the heck has happened in college hoops, specifically with the Pac-12 and the WCC this year. Uh, what What is it going to look like? next year and the year after that for the next two years and then like what are we what's how monumental is this moment it's big and and i i'm like i'm like both of you em and ashton like i have everything right here i didn't have to even look at my my yellow <laughs> sticky Welcome to another episode of Pack in Action. I'm Ashton. I'm here with Emma. Emma, how's it going? It's going good. I don't know why I like had such a, you know, like a, a, a tickled little reaction there. You, I'm just happy to be here, I guess. You kind of made yourself small and I, know, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, tell you you shouldn't because you should be whoever you want to be, but don't be afraid to take up space, girl. Uh, thank you. I needed that. How are you? Um, you know, I am, I'm at peace. You know, it's like mm -hmm. no expectations. We're just living out here, baby. You know what I'm saying? I've, I feel like I did the thing where you bump into your friend and they're in the hometown and you like saw on Facebook that they're getting divorced and you just forgot and you're like, <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> I hope you don't know people that are getting divorced, by the way, because not you're yet. too young for that. Some are coming, I'm sure, but not yet. <laughs> Okay, Just name them. Keeping em. it real. Name no, names. Oh, not right now. Later. <laughs> Later. Uh, when I bump into you in our small town corner store, sure. I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, just so we can, you know, tell everyone where we're at. Uh, let's tell them where we're coming live from, Emma. Right. Aside from the little corner store that I mentioned, we <laughs> could be on Samsung TV Plus at 4 p.m. on Thursdays. Channel 2392. Amazon Channel 2392. I will know that one day in my bones, like you. Um, Amazon Freebie, which same time, keeping it consistent. Mm -hmm. Or the good old Pac-12 Conference YouTube channel, which would be really fun. Um, or maybe a secret fourth option that they haven't told me about yet. Sure. I'm um, just keeping it open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the idea of a secret fourth option that no one else knows about. It's just kind of us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, why did we do this? Um so we got a lot to talk about today. We're going to talk football. We're going to talk basketball. What? That's crazy. What? Didn't. Who's that? Who's she? Um, we're going to learn. We're going to start with, with football, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Much to some of our dismay. Although some of us are, you know, I'm feeling I'm torn because obviously I'm sad for the Beavs, but I'm feeling great for the Cougs. Um, it's great to have someone ranked. Um, I think that's so exciting for where we're at in the in the current, you know, current alignment state so let's start with the beeves let's just you know let's just go there you want to rip the band-aid yeah let's rip the band-aid yeah, let's um, rip the band-aid yeah we watched one of the ugliest games in history this weekend unforch for me and many uh sad beavers all around the world um and and you know we struggled with the same things that we've been struggling with and that's i guess like to be expected but also something that's kind of difficult because it's like okay so the defense still isn't going to get stops the offense still isn't going to move the chains we're going to be punting too much there's just going to be too many little mistakes giovanni had a rough one too so at one point we saw um a couple of our other quarterbacks uh which i guess is fun in a way <laughs> um so you know it's tough stuff but that brings us to our ice pack segment aka our freezing cold take that is not a hot take at all that is very to be expected and for me, this week, that is that the Beavs will not be in the CFP. Um, you know, I'm okay with that. But mm -hmm. just looking towards next year at this point, that's kind of the main goal. You know, we're going to – it's going to be another rebuild, but that's what Beavers do. That's kind yeah. of the heart of us. Um, yeah, rebuild the dam. Exactly. Rebuild yeah. the dam. Love it. I think a lot of it could come down to injuries, and I know I'm a broken record of optimism, but that's what I do. <laughs> we got to balance each other out. We do. It's okay. Um, just the blonde brunette duo, I guess. <laughs> that's what they all say. So I I think it really – it comes down to a lot of that. And I will say I find it really wholesome and wonderful and sweet that really the players ride so hard for Trent Bray. Like mm -hmm. I just love how much they love him. And if they have faith in that – I have no choice but to have faith in it too. Sure. We, you know? we, uh, we love you, Bray Area. Um, one thing I will <laughs> say, uh, just having been there and being, you know, at Oregon State during some really exciting winning seasons and some huge bummer seasons is I just think about the vibe there right now. And it's, I, it's just probably so somber and like you can feel it when, when 
of programs winning and like everyone's walking around kind of like finger gunsing each other, you know, mm. staying in the office playing video games together, blah, blah, blah. And I just know it's like silent heads down, like, yeah. So I want um, the video game time back. I want to be yeah. invited to the next one. I'm a terrible Mario Kart player, but that makes everyone around me look yeah. really good. Yeah. So. Okay. So they could win at something. That'd That's be a strength. Yeah. Um. So I really think that we're seeing like, how how imperative it, imperative it is for a coach to stay at a program. Jake Dickert stayed, and we can tell. Mm-hmm. So um, I, let's just talk a little about the Cougs because um, that's exciting. Yeah, I love to. I am contractually obligated to make the I'm feeling 22 reference. It's just got to be done. So yeah. I am yeah. truly feeling 22. I'm so excited to be ranked. I'm so scared. I want to preserve it in the little glass dome like – Beauty and the Beast's Rose. I just, mm-hmm. I'm so glad that we're going into buy ranked so it doesn't get ripped away from me. Yeah. Actually, I think I'm of the camp, speaking to optimism, pessimism, that we never mention it at all. But I do acknowledge mm-hmm. that this is a football show about Washington State. So we have to. But I am wary of talking too much about being ranked because I just want to, I'm with you. I want to preserve that. Yeah. The wheels will fall where they may. Sure. But I think. Talking about the game specifically, I just am the field freak, I guess. Like that San Diego field looked really difficult to play on. Field specialist. Everybody. All fields. It's who I am. Um, Everybody was sliding around kind of like crazy. So just a bummer. I hope nobody's cleats had too much sand in them. (laughs) And man, they just like did not let Wayshawn Parker fly. Like I, I just was, it, there was not enough. They were really ready for him. And I just want everyone to forget about him so he can succeed again. Yeah. We got to get him moving. Cause I think he was nine, nine carries for 33 yards. And mm-hmm. we just, we need our little guy to have more than that. I agree. Our, but Kyle Thornton, a fellow little friend of ours had a great mm-hmm. game. A lot of our little friends actually had really good games. Mm-hmm. So I just am really Proud of our honored guests and our esteemed colleagues. Yeah, and p- uh, potential future guest. Uh, I know you mentioned earlier that your firstborn child will be named Buddha Interception. Yes, that's okay, my cool. plan right now. That sure. that just that was great. We needed that. We really needed that. Yeah, yeah. So well, I can o- only honor it. Let's uh, you know congratulate them. Be excited for them, and let's also. Talk about some former friends slash foes um, mm-hmm. in our – how do we pronounce this? Pacifist or pacifist? pacifist I, that's pacifist. a good question. Pacifist. Yeah. yeah. I think Rich, our producer, is screaming pacifist um, mm-hmm. right now at, at his monitor. So I can okay. hear it. I can hear it. Basically. We're – you know, in this age of digital media where we're fighting, everyone's so mean. There's so much anger. Let's just um, – Take second, smell the roses, give props to some former and future combatants in the college football world. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's so great for the city of LA that they have so many amazing places to go and things to do. And I think that it's so fun that the result of that is that people aren't going to USC's games. Um, I think it's really interesting to kind of leave, you know, a hundred year old conference and say goodbye to all of us um, just so you can be playing for a pretty small crowd. I think that's um, really interesting. They're, they're going for a really intimate atmosphere and I think they're nailing that. Yeah. It's a family matter. (laughs) Um, I will say speaking of family matters, Colorado is doing really well. They're nestled right below WSU in the little rankings. I had to drop it one last time. It wouldn't be me if I didn't. (laughs) Um, And I just, I will say, I think that they were the prototype LeBron and Bronny. Like some of us were making the like, Oh, your dad still drives you to work jokes years ago you know <laughs> so it's just like nice sure. to see the rest of the world cluing in yeah well speaking of lebron and Bronny, in a way um speaking of basketball basketball our football teams are both on buys this weekend which is crazy timing so what better time than now to chat hoops um next up we will be chatting with hoops analyst matt muleback about basketball what this is a basketball show now maybe it always has been <gasps> Oh my gosh, astronaut meme. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we're only going to talk men's hoops. We're talking women's hoops next week because they get their own show, their own shine. Um, so stay tuned for that. Welcome back to Pack in Action, your favorite show's favorite show. So this year and next year are going to look very different wherein Oregon State and Washington State will be playing in the West Coast Conference. Um, Crazy world that we live in these days. To talk about this with us, though, we are here with Hoops Connoisseur and former Pac-12 Networks analyst Matt Muehlbeck. 
So Matt, you're a college basketball analyst who is wearing a couple different hats this year, literally, considering you'll be on uh, with both Pac-12 schools, ESPN Plus, some Fox, FS1. How excited are you to be part of this new look season? Yeah, it is. It's it's really exciting. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoyed, let me, let me put it this way, not enjoyed. I was ecstatic for the last 12 years working for the Pac-12 and, you know, just loved all the people I met, worked with. Um, just everybody was incredible. The, the places I went, um, but you know, things change. And, uh, so I think we've all had to kind of change and adapt and, and uh, in terms of the TV for, for me, that's been the case, right? So, um, I'm still going to be working. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing some, some Cougs games and some Beavers games and, and, um, uh, you know, some of those WCC games. Um, I am going to be doing FS1, um, and, and Fox, who I've had a relationship also with over the years, and uh, and also some some uh, uh, ESPN Plus stuff, and those will probably be relegated to you know where I live in Tucson, Arizona, which I've already done a couple of their of their games so far, and um, maybe some some ASU games and some other regional teams that that would be close to me. So it's a little bit of of everything, but um, I'm super happy to be to be back you know in front of the mic and just doing games and. What it does is it enables me to do things like this and talk to you all and, and just, you know, talk hoops and, and all kinds of fun things. Yeah. Well, the hoops landscape looks so different. The, the, we've obviously this has been a football show up until now. So we've talked how, how football looks so different and will look so different, but um, in terms of conference alignment, obviously like, listen, we understand every single aspect of it, every facet, we got it all in here for <laughs> sure. But let's say there are some people at home who maybe do not have an understanding of what the heck has happened in college hoops, specifically with the PAC 12 and the WCC this year. Uh, what, what is it going to look like next year and the year after that for the next two years? And then like, what are we, what's, how monumental is this moment? It's big. And, and I, I'm like, I'm like both of you, Em and Ashton, like I have everything right here. I didn't have to even look at my, my yellow <laughs> sticky, um, to remind myself who is in the WCC. Yeah, of course, exactly. I, I will tell you that from the West coast conference, now I grew up in the Bay area. So super familiar with all of those teams. I grew up with those teams. My first game that I ever attended was at USF. And it was, uh, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago, but th there was a guy on their team named Bill Cartwright that he was actually, I think he was from Sacramento or Elk Grove, which was close to Sacramento. And he was, the night I went, I think he was going to break Bill Russell's uh, college record or something like that. I can't remember the exact thing, but I remember going to his game. Um, the second game I ever went to in my life was so, so. WCC, you know, USF, great team, historical team. Back in the 80s, they were amazing. They won some national titles. Um, but St. Mary's was the second game I ever went to. And they're on in Moraga, you know, not too far from like Cal and Stanford. Mm -hmm. And um, awesome school, incredible school. In fact, my sister played soccer there, um, you know, close to where we grew up. And um, they've got an incredible coach named Randy Bennett, who one of my favorite coaches in college basketball. So I think he's going to be, you know, a fun team to, to watch. And, and, you know, of course, I didn't even mention Gonzaga, the number one team that has been number one, of course, in the WCC for many years. And, um, you know, Mark Few, you know, uh, just a, a legend up in Spokane. And I'm down in Tucson and we got Tommy Lloyd, who was his 20 year longtime assistant. So I've, I've gotten a lot of good stories from Tommy on Mark, but, just a great conference. It's it's a really good basketball conference. I think I think Oregon State and Washington State will fit in perfectly. I think they have a lot of the same vibes of of the teams um, of their of their sort of identity and culture. Um, it's a very basketball centric you know mm -hmm. league because a lot of the teams do not have football, or if they do, it's Division Two or something like that. So very very devout basketball fans. Yeah, it, it seems like, I mean, we were talking about this uh, before recording that this would be a Power 5 school if we're talking basketball. And you know what? Maybe we should. Maybe we just decide that. <laughs> it's Power 5, Power 5 conference. Uh, I was going to say, like, are we in trouble? Like, or, like, do you think we're going to nail Cougs? it? Beavs, Beavs and Cougs? Beavs and Cougs. Beavs and Cougs are going to be good. Beavs and yeah? Cougs are going to be good. Yeah, I think, like I said, I think, I think the, the culturally and so forth, they fit well. I think the talent... Look, St. Mary's and Gonzaga are real. Like they, every year, 
are tournament teams. They're probably, you'd put them in the tournament, NCAA tournament right now. Um, and there's some very good teams. It's some really good home and away type venues. You know, you're going to play in some really cool arenas, um, small, smaller than what the, the Beavs and Cougs are used to playing. They're not going to play at the kind of, you know, Arizona type, you know, Pauley Pavilion sure. type. However, like I said, some really good fans, some really good people, um, and some great coaches. It's always been known as a very good coaching league. I mentioned Randy Bennett, you know, Mark Few. Um, uh, oh, uh, Herb Sindek is at Santa mm-hmm. Clara. He was formerly at ASU, mm-hmm. and he's a he's a coach's coach, like really knows how to coach. Um, I'm excited. You know, look, I've known Wayne Tinkle for a long time. And one of my favorite, favorite people, coaches, you name it, from Oregon State. Tinks is the absolute best. Um, <clears throat> cannot wait to see him and the family and, and the whole thing. And I think the new coach uh, for Washington State, I'm really excited about Coach Riley. Um, mm-hmm. You know, from Eastern Washington, he was, I believe, the two-time back-to-back coach of the year in the Big Sky. And mm-hmm. the Big Sky is a conference that is is underrated hard to win. And it's really hard because you have really tough travel, you know, situations. You're traveling all over. It's cold, it's rainy, it's whatever. And he's done a great job there. And he brought a lot of his players um, to Mm -hmm. the Palouse. And so I think they're going to be good. And I know Tinks has some players back, Michael Retai, uh, some of his guys from last year, and he'll, he'll do a great job as always. Well, actually, I was going to I just maybe quickly, because I'm curious about this. I wonder, since you mentioned that you know him well, if you we have I think the Beavs have like eight or nine international players. And I'm wondering, like, if you've talked about that, if you know what the strategy, how that comes together, like what the vibe there is. You know, I think because of the transfer portal. Right. Mm -hmm. And just everybody changing. You're trying to find your niche. And because of NIL money, you're trying to find your niche, right? Who, who, you know, what, where are you going to, where are you going to play? Like, what are the areas you're going to play? One of the areas that actually the WCC is well known for, Coach Bennett at St. Mary's is super well known for winning because he went and he started to recruit Australia. Australia balls out. They're good. at Balls out. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, Patty Mills and just a number of great players. But I think, I think Wayne saw some of the guys leaving, some of the guys going for maybe the NIL money. And he's like, look, I got to figure out a way. I'll tell you something really cool about international guys. They typically come over here. They're incredibly grateful for the opportunity. They usually, and there's, there's some also some rules about NIL and, and not being, you know, they've got some international rules about that, mm, but yeah, they usually are really easy to coach and, and they're super skilled. And so I think with a guy like Wayne Tinkle, it could be a perfect fit. Mm, yeah. Great. So before we go, we want to mention, obviously, so there's this new Pac-12 initiative that's starting Walton Wednesdays, where we're just celebrating Pac-12 legend Bill Walton. Do you have any stories or moments from working with Bill that really stand out to you? I, I've honestly got like a dozen, but I, because we have a, a, a little bit of a not an hour show, I'll, I'll try to give you just a couple. Um, so a couple real quick ones. The first time I ever had a conversation with him at length, he was the, he was doing a game on TV. I was actually the radio announcer for Arizona. And he came over to me and he knew that I knew the team because I was doing the, the radio for Arizona. He wanted to know all about the players, which is typical of him. He was an incredible researcher. So he's asking about every player, you know, what they what they uh, what they were good at, what they weren't good at. And I told him one player, I said, you know, Nick Johnson, I think he'll be the player of the year. And the moment I said that, he said, state your case. <laughs> and I was like not ready to be challenged on my on my opinion. But oh, I started to hear it in his voice, you know. Right? Yeah. I know. And state your case. And so then we start talking, we're going back and forth. And he said, uh, he said, Matt, what else are you doing other than this, you know, radio job? And I said, Well, I'm a lawyer and uh I, I work in private equity. And when I finished that, and when I said that, he he paused, he like looked out into the sky or the stars or whatever he was looking at paused for about three seconds and repeated it and just said private equity and once (laughs) once he finished he just walked away that was it (laughs) said private equity and walked away never to i'm like okay Uh, yeah you've been wondering forever like what did he mean 
That's what did he so mean good. by that? He just couldn't was... wrap his head around someone like Bill yeah. couldn't wrap his head around it, and he's like, "I just got to bail at this point." That's, That's right. So funny. That's right. Um, and all right. Well, yeah. Bill, uh, Bill's yeah, he's such a legend. I'm I'm glad that they're going to be doing a little something for him. It was so so tough to hear that we lost yeah. him. Um, so that'll be that'll be beautiful and and touching, and we're excited for that. Remind us again, just before we go where we can see you this year, any projects you want to plug, just kind of brag for a sec. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're going to see me on ESPN plus. Um, you're going to see me on ESPN plus for the Cougs, for the Beavers. Mm -hmm. And I might even be doing a couple women's games, uh, for, nice. for the, uh, Cougs. So I'm really excited about doing that. Cool. Um, and so you're going to probably see me on FS1. I might have some big 10 and some uh, mountain West games and some of the mountain West, a little bit of a, a foreshadowing, yeah. Some of the Mountain West teams that I'll probably cover could be mm -hmm. Pac-2 or 8 or whatever. It's going to be teams in a couple years. Colorado yeah. State, San Diego State, uh, Boise State, Fresno State. So a couple of those teams might be all of a sudden in the conference, which will be something to talk about. Well, we're so grateful. We're so – it was such a joy to have you, and uh, we'll be on the Same. lookout for you. I'm sure we'll hear you while we're watching Same. all the many, many games. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hope I can come back on later in the year and we can talk more, more hoops. Of course. Love that. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Welcome back to Pack in Action. Um, we had a nice little basketball break there, but there is still plenty of football season left. That's what I keep telling myself. Mm -hmm. So let's look into the crystal ball and make some predictions here for the remainder of the season. Ashton tossed the great name of Pack to the Future in, yeah. and I'm all about it. So what predictions do we have? I'm going to start because I think that John Matier is going to win the Heisman. And if he doesn't, it will be someone else. I'm actually getting a little bit of a different reading from my crystal ball. I'm seeing someone with my first name winning the trophy. I don't know who that might be, but you know, these things aren't always exact. They don't always tell you right out, but yeah, we're not aligned in that. Yeah. We're not aligned in that. Um, but after this weekend, I, my other one is that I think Washington state will be ranked carry the one, uh, 22nd. That's mm. the magic number that I'm getting. I think we're ranked 22nd after this weekend. Yeah. That's the magic okay. number. Um, that makes sense to me for many mm -hmm. reasons. I, I have a crazy prediction. I think that the beefs are going to win two more games. The haters said that it can't be done, but I think we can pull this off. I think we can beat air force and San Jose state. Yeah. Uh, God willing. I feel like I just reversed jinx that. So those are just kind of my it. little, that's my metaphysical, you know, manifestation. Yeah. Um, speaking of the metaphysical happy Halloween, we're airing oh, on Halloween. Yes, so if you're seeing yes. this happy Halloween. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's uh, Halloween this year. I've seen so many people dressed up as memes and like really niche things, which has kind of made it really fun. Mm -hmm. Me too. Actually, that was so Ashton, funny you should say, if you were to dress up as a meme that you now associate with how Oregon State's season is going, um, what would that <laughs> meme be? Who or what would that meme be? Um, for me, that's got to be uh, the Tim Robinson. I think you should leave Carl Havoc sketch where he's sitting there and he's like, I don't want to be around anymore. That's kind of my that's, you know, not a surprise. That's kind of what I'm going through right now. Uh, what mm -hmm. about you? Polar opposite vibe. Um, sure. I, I am going to go so. ahead. I'm going to go ahead and do the LeBron smiling through it all because I genuinely can't believe mm. that this is my life. So like, how's my yeah. form? Yeah, bang in form. That's a classic. Uh, that really yeah. sums up the Cougs football experience this year. Yeah, man. So tweet us uh, your meme if you're feeling funny. And thank you guys so much for hanging with us this week. Uh, we're so excited to see you next time when we talk women's hoops. Women can be anything these days. Women can be anything these days, even discussed on sports TV shows. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh, yes. Once again, follow us on Twitter and IG at Pack in Action Show. We will see you next week when we are Pack in Action.